Now, leaving the trousers inside out for the time being, the next thing that you're going to do is to create your waistband channel and your elastic will thread through there in a minute. First thing to do is to fold over and you're going to take it over to your ironing board. You can pop your trousers over the, the ironing board and you're going to fold over by 1.5 centimetres all the way around. Make sure that you, whichever way this seam allowance is pressed on this side, on the, on the, this is the back, is the same as on this side. So if you're choosing to have them pressed this way, make sure it's the same on both sides. Um, if it's, so for example, this way on this side and this way on this side, then somewhere along with seam will be a twist in your seam allowance. So you just wanna make sure as you're going round and pressing um, that top edge over, that everything is sitting the same on the front and the back. Likewise with the pockets, when you come to the pockets, you want these pockets to be pressed towards the front. So this seam allowance at the top here, just keep it pressed towards the front um, on both sides as you go round. Once you've gone round and pressed that top edge over by 1.5, all the way round, then you're gonna do a second lot of pressing. You're gonna come down and you're gonna turn it over by 3.5. Okay, so it's going to end up looking something like that. And just take your uh, tape measure or your ruler over to your ironing board, measure around as you go, and pop some pins all the way around. So I'm going to go over to my ironing board. I'm going to do that now. And then we're going to make our waistband channel. I've gone round my waistband and I've pressed it under by 1.5 and then 3.5 and then secured with pins all the way around made sure that my side seams are pressed towards the front at the side so that the pockets are pressed towards the front. And I've made sure that my roundabout seam, my crotch seam is facing on the same direction back and front as I pressed it. We're now going to sew all the way round or where we're not going to sew all the way round, I should say, because we need to leave a gap. Um, now it's up to you whether you leave your gap at the back or at the front. In the Tilly and the Buttons instructions, it says, to leave the gap at the centre back um, and I guess this is so that once you've put your elastic through and you finish that bit off it's at the back so it's not going to show however what I'd say is that if you're fitting these on yourself you might actually find it easier to leave the gap at the front because you'll be there drawing your elastic through at your front waist and it's just a little bit more comfortable to do that so in fact I'm going to disobey the rules <laughs> and I'm going to um or disobey the instructions in the booklet that comes with this and I'm just going to do my little gap at the front instead of at the back just because I think once you've got them on if you're fitting them on yourself if your gap is at the front it's a little bit easier but you know if you want to you can do yours at the back it's up to you so I'm gonna I've put you'll notice I've put two pins in here and two pins in here and in between those two pins is going to be my gap and the two pins just remind me the number of times that I've been teaching these and people have just been happily sewing away and gone all the way round. And uh, then they're like, ah, I didn't leave a gap for my elastic. So if you put two pins either side, then that means you've got that little gap and you remember when to start and stop. So let's hop back over to our machine and we're going to sew that round now. If you want to, if you're making a smaller size, you might want to remove your free arm so that you can put these, especially if you're making a teenager size, so that you can put this over the end there. Um, I'm going to leave my free arm on because it gives me a bit of extra resting space and actually I've got a nice large opening to handle. I'm going to put that under there and just where my two pins are, I'm going to start sewing. In fact, let's remove those pins. Now they've done their job of marking my start position. And I'm going to pop my presser foot down and just make sure that I'm sewing just a couple of millimetres in from the edge of that fold. And uh, you're just going to go all the way around now, straight stitch, little back stitch at the beginning and the end, and um, come all the way around until you reach those uh, two pins at the end again. So I've sewn my waistband channel and I've given it a press. It's always a good idea to press your stitches after you've sewn them. And we're now going to thread our elastic through. So I've opened up my packet of elastic that came with my pyjama kit and I'm going to attach a safety pin to one end and then I'm going to use another safety pin. This is a good tip that I picked up from the Tilly and the Buttons video and just attach the elastic 
somewhere on your trouser and that means that you're not accidentally going to pull that elastic all the way through and I'm just going to paste that in there and I'm going to kind of caterpillar it and wiggle it all the way through that waistband channel and having that safety pin at the end gives me something to um, grip onto as I'm going around. I'm just trying it's quite a good snug fit with this elastic and the waistband channel but try to keep it flat and try um, to make sure that it doesn't get twisted as you're going through. Now I'm gonna, I'm not gonna cut my elastic that I've got out of my pack. Um, I'm gonna uh, thread it all the way around and then I'm going to fit it and then cut it off um, just to be more economical with the elastic that way. Um, now if you're making it for yourself, you can obviously try these on and then work out how big you, how long you want your elastic to be. If you're making this for a gift, then there is a formula here um, on just beyond the middle page, which says the elastic length should be your low waist um, times 0.9 plus 1.5 centimetres. So there's a little formula there for you. And if you're making these as a gift, you can, and you don't know the size of the person's waist, I just tend to go to Marks and Spencers or Next on their website and look at their measurement table. And if you know that you know the person you're making for is 16, then you can just um, sort of copy it from there. And same with the children's wear. They give you all the measurements and they're pretty reliable. Lovely. Well, they look great on. I'm really happy with them. And I've just um, pinned my elastic there. So I've got a nice big bit of spare elastic that I can use for something else, maybe for some children's pyjamas. Um, and yeah, so I'm just making sure, I pin those together, I just want to make sure that that is flat and not twisted at all. And then once I'm happy with that, I'm just going to cut that elastic off there. Now, um, I like to have a nice, um, healthy overlap there. It's probably about three centimetre overlap. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw that through so it's got plenty of space to work with it. I'm going to pop that under my machine and what I like to do is actually sew a square to connect those two and then sew across through the square so I'm going to show you how I do that and that just gives it a really really strong join. There's my overlapped elastic and I'm going to just slide that under my foot there and anchor that with the needle then I'm going to move my safety pin out of the way. And then I'm going to sew. I'm not, I haven't changed my um, my thread colour because it's all going to be hidden anyway. And then I come round here. I come down. And then back round here. And then back to the beginning again. It's not the neatest looking thing in the world, but it does the job. Oops, all the way back round here. Go over those first few stitches again. And then I'm going to make a cross. So I'm going to make a Scottish flag. very bad wonky Scottish flag. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and this means it's really, really secure. I'm sure you're going to do this a lot better than me. A few back stitches. And there we go. That is really nice and um, secure. And that's never gonna split apart on calendar. <laughs> so now I'm just gonna pull to get that elastic back in again and I want to just move that away from the centre front if I can where I've crossed over so I don't have too much bulky elastic at the centre front because I'm gonna put a waistband tie there. So I'm just gonna squidge that along to one side. So that's now resting to the side of the centre front. Okay, 
So the next thing to do is to close this gap. We've got this gap here which, where, where we put the elastic in. So we're just going to close that gap now. Okay, so I'm pulling that flat, pop it back under there, wind my needle in so it's going over the top of the um, existing stitches and making sure that that's pressed under. And the really important thing when you're doing this is don't sew through your elastic. So you should have, in fact, if you slide your finger there, you should feel that there's a ridge going up there where the elastic starts. And then this bit is nice and flat. So just make sure when you're stitching that you aren't stitching through your elastic. And just stretch it so that you've not got gathers. And you should keep going until you meet the stitches where you finished them off before. And then you can do a little back stitch. And that's your gap closed. Trim off those thread tails.